Good morning, boys and girls. Today I'm going to tell you seven stories from the Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls book. This book is about inspirational women in history that have done important things. I hope you enjoy. The first story I'm going to tell you about is Amelia Earhart. She was a famous aviator or pilot. Once upon a time, there was a girl called Amelia. She saved enough money to buy a yellow airplane. She called it the Canary. For a few years later, she became the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. It was a dangerous flight. Her tiny plane was tossed around by strong winds and icy storms. But she kept herself going with a can of tomato juice sucked through a straw. After almost 15 years, she touched down in a field of northern Ireland, much to the surprise of the cows. Have you come far? the farmer asked. All the way from America, she laughed. Amelia loved to fly, and she loved to do things that no one had ever done before. Her biggest challenge was to be the first women to fly around the world. She could only take a small bag as the space in the plane had to be used for fuel. Her long flight was going well. She was supposed to land on the tiny Howland Island, but never got there. In her last transmission, Amelia said she was flying through the clouds and running low on fuel. Her plane disappeared somewhere over the Pacific Ocean and was never found. Before leaving, she wrote, I am quite aware of the hazards. I want to do it because I want to do it. Women must try to do the same things that men have tried. If they fail, their failure must be a challenge to others. The next story I'm going to tell you about is Harriet Tubman. She was a freedom fighter. She was born in 1822 and died in 1913. One day, a girl was standing in front of a grocery store when a black man came running past. He was being chased by a white man who yelled, Stop that man! He's my slave! She did nothing to stop him. The girl's name was Harriet. She was 12 years old and she was also enslaved. Harriet hoped the man would escape. She wanted to help him. Just then, the overseer hurled an iron object at the running man. He missed, but hit Harriet on the head. She was so badly injured, but her thick hair cushioned the blow enough to save her life. My hair had never been combed, she said, and it stood out like a bushel basket. A few years later, the family who owned her put her up for sale, so Harriet decided to escape. She hid in the daytime and traveled by night. When she crossed the border into Pennsylvania, she realized for the first time in her life, she was free. I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person now that I was free. There was such a glory over everything, and I felt like I was in heaven. She thought about the runaway slave and her family in Maryland who were still enslaved. She knew she had to help them. Over the next 11 years, she went back 19 times and rescued hundreds of enslaved people. She was never captured, and she never lost a single person. The next story is going to be about Helen Keller. She was an activist. She was born in 1880 and died in 1968. Once upon a time, a girl named Helen suffered from a bad fever that left her deaf and blind. Frustrated and angry, she used to lie on the ground, kicking and screaming. One day, her mom took Helen to a special school for the blind. A talented young teacher named Anne Sullivan met them and decided to try and teach Helen how to speak. But how can you learn the word doll if you can't see your doll? Anne wondered. How do you say water if you've never heard anyone speak? Anne realized that she had to use Helen's sense of touch. She held Helen's fingers under running water and spelled the word water on her hand. Then she spelled the word doll while Helen cuddled her favorite doll. Helen suddenly understood that different words stood for different things. With her fingers on Anne's lips, Helen felt the vibrations when these words were spoken, and slowly she learned how to make those words herself. Soon, she was speaking out loud for the first time. She learned how to read Braille by running her fingers over the raised dots. She even learned different languages, French, German, Latin, and Greek too. Helen gave public speeches and championed the rights of people with disabilities. She traveled the world with her amazing teacher and her beloved dog. She didn't need words to tell them how she felt. She just gave them a big, loving hug. The next story is about Mathilde Montoya. She was a doctor. She was born in 1859 and died in 1939. Once upon a time in Mexico, there lived a little woman called Soledad, who had a little girl whose name was Mathilde. 
Soledad soon realized that her daughter was exceptionally bright. She could read and write by the time she was four and was ready for high school by the time she was 11. When she turned 16, Matilde started training as a midwife, but she had bigger dreams. She wanted to be a doctor. When she joined the National School of Medicine, she was the only female student, and lots of people told her that women could never be a doctor. But she had her mom and many friends on her side. At the end of her first year of the university, they tried to expel Matilde. Matilde wrote a letter to the president of Mexico asking for his help. He wrote the university telling them to stop being so unfair to her. She finished her course, but then the university stopped her from going in for her final exam. Again, she wrote to the president, and again he stepped in. This time, he passed a law that allowed all women to study medicine and become doctors. The president himself flew all the way to the university to see her take her final exam. It was a historic moment. The next day, newspapers across the country celebrated the story of La Señorita Mitel Montoya, Mexico's first ever female doctor. The next story is about a woman a lot of you know. Her name is Michelle Obama. She is a lawyer and a first lady, and she was born in 1964. Once upon a time, there was a girl who was always afraid. Her name was Michelle Robinson. She lived in a one-bedroom apartment in her Chicago with her family. Maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe I'm not good enough, she worried. And their mother would say, if it can be done, you can do it. Anything is possible, said her dad. Michelle worked hard. Sometimes teachers told her that she should not aim too high because her grades were not that good. Some people said she should never achieve something big because she was just a black girl from the south side of Chicago. But Michelle chose to listen to her parents. Anything is possible, she thought. So she graduated from Harvard and became a lawyer at a big firm. One day, her boss asked her to mentor a young lawyer. His name was Barack Hussein Obama. They fell in love and got married a few years later. One day, Barack told her that he wanted to become president of the United States. At first, she thought he was crazy. But then she remembered, if it can be done, you can do it. So she quit her job and helped him on his campaign. Barack won the elections twice, and Michelle became the first African-American first lady of the United States. No one is born smart. You become smart through your hard work. That is her motto. Next story is about a woman named Rosa Parks, an activist. She was born in 1913 and died in 2005. Once upon a time in Montgomery, Alabama, a segregated city, black people and white people went to different schools, prayed in different churches, and shopped in different stores, rode on different elevators, and drank from different drinking fountains. Everyone rode the same buses, but they had to sit in different areas, white people up front and black people at the back. Rosa Parks grew up in this black and white world. It was hard for black people and many were angry and sad because of the segregation. But if they protested, they were thrown in jail. One day, 42-year-old Rosa was sitting in the back of the bus on her way home from work. It was crowded and there was not enough seats in the front section, the one reserved for whites. So the driver told Rosa to give up her seat so a white person could sit down. Rosa said no. She spent the night in jail, but this one brave act showed people that it was possible to say no to injustice. Rosa's friends declared a boycott. They asked every single black person to not use any of the buses in the city until the law was changed. The word spread fast and wide, and the boycott lasted for 381 days. It ended when the bus segregation was declared unconstitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court. It took 10 years for segregation to be banned in any other state, but it happened, finally, thanks to Rosa's first brave no. Last story for today is about a woman named Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's a Supreme Court justice, and she was born in 1933. Once upon a time, there was a girl who dreamed of becoming a great lawyer. A lady lawyer? People would mock her. Don't be ridiculous. Lawyers and judges are always men. Ruth looked around her and saw that they were right. But there's no reason why that shouldn't change, she thought to herself. She applied to Harvard Law School and became one of the brightest students. Her husband, Marty, was also a student at Harvard. Your wife should be home baking cookies and looking after the baby, people used to say. But Marty didn't listen. Ruth was a terrible cook. And besides, he loved taking care of their daughter and was proud of his brilliant wife. Ruth was passionate about women's rights and argued six landmark cases on gender equality before the United States Supreme Court. 
Then, she became the second female Supreme Court justice in the country's history. There are nine justices on the Supreme Court. If I'm asked when there will be enough women on the Supreme Court, I will say, when there are nine. People are shocked, but there have been nine men, like forever, and nobody's ever raised their eyebrows at that. Even in her 80s, Ruth does 20 push-ups every day and has become a style icon, thanks to the extravagant collar she wears in courts with her judge's robes. And that is the last story from this book. I hope you enjoyed, and remember, if you write a paragraph from this reading, you will earn bonus points. Have a good day. Good morning, boys.